Hey everyone, welcome to week five stratigraphy. Uh, probably the most commonly used type of illustration by all sorts of archeologists. Practical and useful, yet can be tricky to get right. So let's get into it. So welcome to week five, Stratigraphy Week. Uh, I know to some, Stratigraphy may not seem like illustration because a lot, if not most, archaeologists use it quite frequently in the field. However, there are elements that separate a useful or good drawing um, from a confusing or bad drawing. Um, so Stratigraphy can be used for many things. Um, often referred to as different terms, such as uh, site plan, plan map, pit map, um, or site map. If you're drawing layers of earth, it's all stratigraphy. So we will also go over the most important elements of a stratigraphic drawing and how to keep out that clutter. Um, it's not always as easy as it sounds. We will talk about conventions and styles such as the Harris matrix, and then draw with me. What makes a good or useful drawing? Um, it needs to be clear, simple, and balanced in regards to the illustration used. It should be neat and tidy. Um, it needs to highlight important information or the information that is pertinent to what you're going to be using the drawing for. It needs to communicate information from the field to the drawing. It needs to have layers that show the location of artifacts and objects um, that also have a clear transition from one to the next. And something else not many people think of, it needs to have a creative solution to spatial or visual problems. A good stratigraphy drawing can highlight and explain a lot of information in an easy to read manner without cluttering up the page. Sometimes uh, this takes a good amount of creative use of space and illustration. Now, what makes a bad or confusing or possibly less useful drawing? To be honest, uh, there are a lot of them. Um, of course, one can usually get the information needed from just about any stratigraphy drawing if you you know, try hard enough or sit there long enough. Um, however, the easier it is to read one, the more time you have for other things, the less frustrating it can be. So less useful drawings are those that are cluttered, uh, possibly inaccurate, the layers are not clear, um, and important information is not highlighted or easily um, recognized or accessible. So in this lecture today, we will look at different types of stratigraphic drawings, but mostly we will focus on stratigraphic site maps as they are some of the most common and some of the most commonly misdrawn. Um, and especially since most of you, if not all, have done or will create one of these illustrations for work at some point in your career. So you can see this drawing on this slide. Um, there is no key present, but each layer is very clear, right? Um, it's not too cluttered because each layer is very defined. Um, it has the writing separate from the illustration, which is also helpful because it doesn't draw the eye away from kind of any patterns or anything you might notice within the stratigraphy. Stratigraphic site maps can be tricky because of course you can't illustrate one completely until the whole pit or section has been excavated to the bedrock. So with a really good drawing and depending on the site that you're digging, you'll be able to see the different occupation periods within the stratigraphy. Uh, this is what's most important about stratigraphic site plans. So what is stratigraphy? Stratigraphy is an idea borrowed from geology that a deposit on top of one another deposit is later in time than the previous. Um, so for archaeology, stratigraphy is the sequence of events in the archaeological record. 
Um, and what is excavation and archaeology concerned with? The events. Uh, so the basic elements of a good stratigraphy drawing in archaeology should show the layers, where any artifacts were found, any objects such as rocks or foundations, uh, the depth of each layer, and any anomalies in the layers or the archaeological record. So you can see in this drawing, they have it just, um, they have their scale, and then they have it just layered, layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, um, and it's not too cluttered. Um, it's, you know, pretty clear to read, but it's also not telling you much, is it? Um, there's not enough going on. Uh, there's not a key, you know, you may see how the layers are laid out, but why is this information important? What is it about these things? So one of the most common ways to depict a stratigraphic illustration is what's known as the Harris matrix. Um, as I have given you a few examples here that I have drawn, um, as layers are not always layered on top of one another, which may seem contradictory, uh, this method is quite useful. You might have occupation period one on top of occupation period three, uh, because in occupation period two, all they changed were maybe they added a cash or a deposit within the previous occupation. They might have reused what was already there. Um, they could have just reused it, but then that is also important and tricky to note, um, hence the Harris matrix. So as I have showed in this drawing here, it kind of goes from very simple, what you see in a lot of um, stratigraphy drawings, um, simple Harris matrix layers one through four right on top of another. But then as it moves on, they get a little more complicated up into the last one, which can be quite complicated. Hence the Harris matrix takes all these layers and shows you how they have been laid out, but then it also puts them in a nice uh, graph for you to decipher. Now I'm going to draw a Harris type matrix um, stratigraphic site plan. Um, so all the usual things I tell you can be seen here, um, except the light angle. It's not necessary with stratigraphy, um, but I draw my bottom line first. Um, now be kind because it's hard to make up a stratigraphic site plan from imagination. Um, I didn't have one that I was allowed to share with you just quite yet. Um, but I first get my measurements on and create my key, which is out of sight here, unfortunately. Um, as you can see, I use simple patterns for the different layers for a imaginary foundation um, and rock bed there. Um, so now you may have seen colored stratigraphic site plans, um, but I don't particularly care for uh, stratigraphy drawings because everyone's eyes are drawn to different colors um, more than others. Um, and it sort of distracts from the information that you're needing to relay to your um, audience. So even if it's just one color, but different gradients of it, it's still a little distracting. Um, I also don't, as an illustrator, personally care for layer names to be written one on top of the other, um, as in the illustration I showed you a few slides ago. Um, they tend to get combined when you're looking at it and it's easy to forget which name you're looking at, um, forget what you were trying to figure out from the graph uh, because all of the information is just piled one on top of another. Um, and if you're looking at multiple things going back and forth, it can be really uh, confusing. So I personally prefer key um, and a lot of professional papers will have keys as well. Uh, that way, it um with a key it also doesn't it's not um telling you what you're supposed to take away from the site plan it lets your eye kind of notice different things about it um and then you can pick up what um you're supposed to based on uh what the article um or information is relaying in the literature um and not the illustration so um, obviously the measurements aren't exactly accurate because uh, I made it up, 
but what's important is that you know it's clear it's not cluttered um it's got the um you know the caches drawn in um which are not going to be you know they might be sort of staggered on top of one another um but it's gonna be hard without a Harris matrix format to um show kind of um the timeline or significance of where the caches are placed um and these patterns that i have drawn in they're just patterns i chose um which can also be a little bit confusing which patterns to choose um an easy way to do it is um depending on how many layers you have the thickness of your layers and the direction um or the thickness of your lines and the direction of them you can change the direction you can change the thickness um it really helps because it keeps it simple but it also makes it um clearly um different from the previous um or other layers surrounding it i'm not a fan of uh dots because they can get confused with like rock or something like that um so it's best to stick to lines or you know kind of maybe like a grid pattern um and as we will see next week in uh digital illustration um on adobe illustrator you can use swatches um and it can put in different things for you on your different layers that was stratigraphy um as you can see it's simple but also complicated um i recommend if you're trying out the illustrations to um since it's not graded to try um looking up different uh stratigraphy drawings or stratigraphic site plans um if or if you have some from previous sites um taking a look at those or any articles you may have read that have them in them um just to get a feel for you know what's what's the norm um and stratigraphy drawings can take practice to make the best ones i mean anyone can draw one um most archaeologists will have to draw one just to you know keep a record in the field um but there are some that are better than others so um keep practicing your drawing send me any questions um send me drawings i will be happy to give feedback um and next week we will be getting into digital illustration which i know some of you are very excited about um and we'll be talking about different digital techniques um in the archaeology and archaeological illustration world so don't forget the quiz and as always don't forget to practice your drawing all right thanks guys